Welcome. I'm still stuck a little bit in group theory, but it's three short stories. The first is about Rubik cube, the two times two times two cube, which is actually something which predates the Rubik cube. Larry Nichols has already two years before Rubik got a patent for that, but without the colors on the side, but it's still cool. And Larry Li N Nichols is uh, lives in Arlington, just maybe a mile from where I live. So uh, I want to illustrate something about this uh, pocket cube because I learned about the Rath's product, Kranz product in uh, group theory and I wondered whether the Kranz product, the, the, the Rath's product of natural groups is natural and the structure of the Rubik cube is actually a Rath's product. I can say something about this. But uh, this is a, a pretty cool group. It has a, so you have a, a, a gauge group, which is a Z3 to the seven, which is kind of telling you how the cubes are turned. And then this is over the base manifold, which is the, the S8, the group of permutations, which you have here. So uh, you have also permutations in space, kind of this is, if you identify that, then the group is actually pretty small, but three million, three million points. I still try to plot this in Mathematica, the graph. You know, the graph has then three million, the Cayley graph has then three million points. It's a little bit, I'm not sure whether I, I, I can do that, but you can implement these uh, uh, groups in a computer very easily. So uh, in Mathematica, it's a couple of lines, actually very similar syntax, which you use in Mathematica and gap. I myself learned this in language Cayley, a computer algebra language became the magma and uh, we once and I was a, a course assistant with Matter we uh, assigned a problem to actually take uh, you, you give the you give the machine a group like this you know it can be any group it can be this group and what it comes up is with an algorithm which does that it's a little bit tedious to find out this uh, all these moves and a, a computer can do that much faster for example, once you have fixed the fixed the, uh, the, the the top one, let me just show you. This is the move which I always move uh, used for uh, for changing things. So it's kind of just a, a move which fixes this top part, and then you have to figure out what happens on the uh, at the bottom. This is called a stabilizer group, and what what you do is you just you build kind of a, a you know rules which give you then just this. Uh, and uh, also in, in grad school, I used this uh, computer algebra systems a little bit. Also once for a con contest in Bern, uh, where we had to uh, solve such a cube. And uh, I, I told that story a lot of times. It was a it was a cheese maker from Emmental who who won that competition. It was much faster than we all the students who or, uh, who have been educated in group theory and were uh, uh, also uh, using computer algebra systems. So uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty cool and uh, I like this kind of example uh, here as an example which illustrates that rest product this Kranz product. So what you have is uh, something very very natural. So uh, what you have is if you have a if you have a space x like z3 this is the turning which you have on the space of three elements which just rotates around and then you have uh, on the on on the base all the rotations of the cubes this is this is the symmetric group with uh, eight elements so what you have is and then when you when you look at this rats product this is this is then a, a permutation on the product so what you have is it so so you have a so you can have a permutation of the cubes and then you have also uh, turnings of the uh, of of the cube, so but it's actually just a semi-direct product of h is the base in this case this is the s8 which is which is the which is the permutation group and that is all the possible configuration which you have it's kind of like the the uh, you know the fiber positions which are possible over every point you can have a fiber position of three uh, possible uh, r rotation states. And uh, what happens in the end, there is just there is a there's a there's a there's a conservation law. Every time you move, you preserve a, a parity modulo three. So in the end, you have only three to the seven times eight factorial uh, possibilities. Just because you cannot turn one cube uh, around, that's a quark. 
a quark state, which uh, you can have three three quarks together, which uh, gets you then uh, a baryon, and then you can uh, take two two, or you can turn two, and then you get the meson. So these are hadron states, and so it's it's it's, it's a pretty pretty cool group. And uh, so very elegant using the rest product. It's a natural group in the sense that you can write down a uh, metric space and so this Cayley graph, weighted Cayley graph, and uh, this defines the group structure. So I was interested in that. And that was also why I was interested in, in all these uh, products. Now we come to a, a group which has a motivated Gupta and Seitki and it's a group which is very, very interesting because it, it, it shows intermediate growth. So it's a very natural question. If you, look at the, if you look at the group and then you look at the Cayley graph, so you have some generators, you look at the Cayley graph, so you have these uh, uh, the neighborhoods and then you have the ball of radius two, the ball of radius three, and so on. And you look, how does that grow? How does that ball grow? If that ball grows exponentially, we call it exponential growth, like for the free group, or if it is kind of like a in Z in, a, in the in the free abelian group C D E, then it's 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 polynomial. So the, the cubes have the volume two uh, n plus one to the d. So essentially, just n to the d. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a polynomial growth. In the sixties, uh, uh, John Milner has asked whether there are some intermediate growth rates. It's by the way a very similar question what you have in dynamical system. You have sensitive dependence on initial conditions, which is exponential growth. In integrability, you have polynomial growth, and uh, so it's typical for integrability that you have polynomial growth of the co-cycle uh, uh, norms. And then the intermediate thing—that's kind of where things become interesting, uh, where you have mixed behavior, behavior between exponential, hyperbolic, and between integrable. Uh, Grigor Chuk in 84 has found a nice group and it's called the Grigor Chuk group. Now it is uh, acting on a on a tree, on an infinite tree. It's not the beta lattice you see because the degree here is not constant everywhere is three. So there are only two branches at the base. So you have kind of a you have a initially it branches into two and then always branches into two again and again. So it's a it's it, it's a very natural space to to work with, uh, and the group is a is a part of the automorphism group of this of this tree. Uh, four generators. The first generator just takes these two branches and and rotates them around, flips them around. So that's the first, and the second one uh, does uh, something recursive. So it takes on this. You look at this uh, part of the of the of the tree. You flip these two branches, kind of subtrees here, or branches. So you flip this, you flip this on the, on the next generation, and here you leave that the same, and here you plant in the same uh, action which you have seen. You, uh, you plant this action B in here. So it's a recursive thing. Also here, this is just a, a, another generator which does something similar. And so uh, that was, uh, uh, and it's an interesting case, it's an interesting case of a group. I was exposed first to the gupta Sitki group when uh, Gilbert Bramslag was uh, giving a course on combinatorial group theory uh, when I was a, uh, started to be a grad student. They actually did not yet know really where I wanted to go and uh, I was very excited about a question which he raised early in the, in the class which is this group here, this gupta Sitki group. He asked whether it's so this finitely generated group so it's kind of very, this was actually motivated by, Gupta and Sitki were motivated by this uh, Grigor Chuk group, but it's kind of a simpler, a simpler uh, uh, group. What you can do, you can do it for any, any, any P also. This is for three, you can do it for four, five, six. So what you do is you on the, on the, uh, the first generator just rotates around the branches. So in this case, there are three branches. This is actually an action on the, on the beta lattice. It's on a beta lattice. And so the second one flips just two around and the third one plants in this, this, this recursive thing again. So this B is planted in here. So that's you, you continue like that. And uh, so this is a, uh, you, can, you can show that was, it's in Baumslag's lectures and his idiot lectures, maybe at display. 
displayed display them here. First of all, you, you show that it's infinite. It's an infinite group, also here. This. Then it's a P group, meaning that uh, every subgroup which you have any element you take has order uh, power of P. So that's kind of interesting. So it's kind of an answer to the Burnside problem. Burnside was asking uh, uh, lots of interesting questions and one of the pioneers in this in this area asked whether it is possible that you have the free group and you have the Burnside group and you have, a, you have a, a quotient of the free group in such a way that every order is P. So this is called the Burnside group. P, B, <coughs> and the question is, is this finite? Necessary finite or not? So that's an interesting interesting uh, 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 question. But then Baumstruck was asking whether it is uh, finitely presented. And I tried to prove this. Actually, I had thought I have proved it. So I essentially wasted all this uh, uh, time just trying to prove to prove, uh, to prove prove that recursively by just assuming you have finitely many generators and then using some some kind of some kind of contradiction. You get into some kind of contradiction. And uh, I actually, uh, so it, it, it's interesting. So Sitki has a paper where he claims that, but Baumslag, that was after that paper was published. He just writes in his notes, uh, I was told that it's, uh, finite, it's not finitely presentable, but uh, doesn't know a proof. So that's kind of an interesting thing. So by the way, there are, there are, uh, so uh, uh, Mukta is, a, is, a, is kind of an academic brother of, of Baumsla, so because both were students of uh, Bernhard Neumann. So there is this small world phenomena that a lot of things are connected which you think are not connected. And uh, so, for example, what you can do is you can make some association. So uh, Bernhard Neumann has, had a wife, uh, Hannah Neumann, who was also working in group theory. She was a student of Olga Tauski Top. And uh, Olga Tauski uh, was uh, at Caltech, so I, I was I, I met her there, and also uh, Neumann was also introducing the outer billiard problem, which I was very fond of, and uh, it's also called the Moser Neumann problem. So Moser was my undergraduate uh, ad advisor. So it's kind of uh, interesting how many things are connected. Also, Baumslag was in uh, here there in, in Nantucket. Uh, often, so he had a house there. Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't follow me. It doesn't always follow me. Let's just see whether it follows. Me.